Hello crafty friends, in today's video I'm going to turn a plain window envelope into an ephemera holder. Wait until you see all the surprises that are inside. We're going to start with a plain window envelope. What we're not going to do is use a heat gun when we want to dry anything because that'll make the window melt as I did in my first attempt and this is now take number two. I'm just going to trim the top part where it has been ripped just to neaten it off and make it a straight cut. I'm not sure yet exactly what I'm going to do and how much color or paint I'm going to add. So I want to cover up some of the elements that are already on the envelope, just so they don't shine through when I finish my project. So I'm adding some glue stick and then sticking on some old book pages, just here and there randomly over the areas that I don't want to show. And then for the back, I've decided I'm going to cover the whole area in just different kinds of old paper, a bit like a rough patchwork. Originally, I was going to do the front and the back the same, was just adding the inks and the color, but the paper is quite flimsy and then the envelope was quite thin. So I thought adding the paper like this would also add an element to make it a bit more sturdy and easier to handle. If you don't have old book papers like this, you could also use pieces from a magazine or even just one piece of cardstock for the whole area. Remember to always try and use what you have. Once all the glue has dried well, for the front section, I'm going to rip off the pieces of paper that I've just stuck down. And there where the glue stick remains, some of the paper will stay behind and it'll give it a torn and worn look, which I really like. I've used this before on my altered playing cards too. For the back, I'm going to leave the papers solid. I'm just going to trim off the excess. Just check that all of your pieces have stuck down well. If there's any corners that are lifting, just use a bit of glue stick just to secure everything down. I'm giving mine a vintage feel, so I'm going to use my Distress Oxide sprays. I'm not using them in the spray form, I'm just putting droplets onto an acrylic block and then spraying with some water and then smushing my envelope onto the acrylic block to pick up the colour. I then just use a baby wipe to wipe off any ink from the window. The colours I'm using are Vintage Photo, Brushed Corduroy, Antique Linen and Tea Dye. If you don't have any inks, you can also do the same kind of technique using watered down acrylic paints or even watercolors. You can do as many layers of colors as you want or even just one color, depending how much depth you want in your background. I'm going to do all four colors and I'm going to draw well between each stage so that the colors don't mix too much and blend. So I have distinct differences in tones. This project took me a little longer than normal because I couldn't use my heat gun to dry each stage and I had to leave it to either dry while I did something else or leave it to dry overnight, which I did find a bit frustrating because I like to work fast and try and finish a project a day. But as you saw with the first one that I did, I used the heat tool, which instantly melted the plastic window, which even though I didn't have the heat tool very, very close, any kind of heat damaged it. So please learn from my mistakes and you will need some patience for this project. Something else you could use for color is black coffee. I've just got a strong cup of black coffee and I'm using my paintbrush to add little drops and more definition to the background. You could also just coffee stain the entire envelope. One of my favorite colors that goes with vintage browns is turquoise. So I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise with my color burst powders. And I just love the combination of these two colors. I think they contrast really, really well. The color burst powders are super concentrated. So you only really need very, very little. And then you just spray some water on the top. Here I've added a bit too much. As you can see, I'm trying to lift some with my finger. But you can see as soon as I spray the water, the strong, intense color that it has. There's a bit of a puddle there. Let's not waste it. I'm going to dip an index card into that just to pick up the color. 
and then we can make the index card into something at another time. Once everything is nice and dry, I'm going to add some gesso. You don't have to do this part if you're happy with your background. I always like to use a bit of white gesso though. I find that it sort of softens the background and makes everything cohesive and it gives it a bit of a misty look and makes everything connect. But it is a personal choice and if you don't have gesso, you definitely don't have to use it. You could also use white acrylic paint. It doesn't work quite as well as gesso, but if you don't have, you could use white acrylic paint. I'm just using my finger to apply and then I use a baby wipe to wipe up if I've put too much or just to try and blend it a bit more. Another way you can add it is just using a piece of cardboard. Just cut a little rectangle shape, dip it into the gesso and then scrape it here and there and everywhere onto your page. It gives it a different kind of application so it has more of a stripey kind of look. Always just try and experiment and see which way you prefer. Once the gesso is dry, I'm going to add some stamping. I'm using my script stamp and black ink. I'm just pressing it gently into the ink pad and then just randomly here and there onto the envelope. I'm just covering the window with a scrap piece of paper to prevent any of the ink going onto the window. I'm also going to add gesso on the back of the envelope. I'm not adding any kind of ink, just the gesso. I start with a piece of cardboard, but I do prefer the look when I use my finger. So I'm just going to blend in on sort of where the papers overlap. And I'm going to not cover the entire area. I want some areas with more gesso than others. So there is a lot of the paper still shining through. Once everything is dry, I'm happy with the front and the back. So now I'm going to start folding my little folder. I'm not folding it exactly in the middle as the window is not exactly centered to the left half of the envelope. So I'm folding it with about half a centimeter to the right of the window. And then on the left, I'm doing the same with leaving about a half a centimeter. And then there's a small flap that's going to go over, which is going to then be my closure. For the middle of my ephemera folder, I'm going to put a vellum pocket. I love using vellum for pockets because I love that you can see the tags and all the bits and bobs that you put inside. I think it really has a lovely effect. So I've just got a piece of white vellum that I'm just sort of measuring to fit inside. And then I'm going to not cut it. I'm going to leave it overlapping. And then I'm going to run it under my sewing machine. I'm just using a black thread and using the plain running stitch. And I'm stitching all the way up the left and right sides down the middle and along the bottom. And then I'm just going to tear off the excess vellum. A good trick is never to cut your vellum exactly the size you need. Always leave it to overlap because sometimes it can slip under the sewing machine and then it won't look great. Leave it excess, do your stitching and then just trim it down. I've decided to use a whale tab as part of my closure. I have these turquoise ones and I'm just trying to find the right size. I think the medium size will look best. And I'm just going to measure the middle and then punch through an eyelet. I'm then going to attach it to my little flap closure with just a little drop of glue just to keep it in place. And then I'm going to run it under the sewing machine using my zigzag stitch just for something different and a bit of texture and just very roughly zigzag it up and down just to keep it in place. You'll notice when I do my stitching, it's never neat and tidy. I do like it quite rough and sort of free flowing. I do enjoy that look, but if you prefer more of a neater look, you can of course measure precisely and do more straight stitching. And now a really fun part that I quite enjoy is filling in the pocket on the inside. So I'm just going to get a whole lot of tags that I have, ready-made tags, and other little bits and pieces of ephemera, and I'm going to really stuff this quite full. I do like it rather jam-packed.
If you don't have ready-made tags, of course you can make tags and you can put in these pockets anything you like and anything that suits your project. And now to fill the pocket that has got the little window, I'm going to use this postcard, but the actual postcard picture is really ugly. So I'm going to keep the back side of the postcard because it looks vintagey and it's got the postcard markings. And then I'm just going to find something to cover the front with. Now, this is a little book that I have. It's from Topology. It's like a calendar. It's from January through to December and it has beautiful pictures from different artists. So I'm just going to see if I can find one that suits my project and I'm going to attach it to the front of the postcard. I have a link to the topology website in the description below. There's also a discount code if you use my links. Now I'm adding a piece of music paper first onto the postcard before I place my little artist picture because that paper is really really thin and transparent slightly and then you'll be able to see this ugly yellow from the original picture of the postcard. At least with the music paper if anything does shine through it's still part of the theme. I'm just going to trim it down to size with my cutter and then I'm going to distress the edges with Vintage Photo Distress Ink which will suit the overall vintage theme. I think this postcard is really great. I do love it and I love the picture of the girl in the beautiful turquoise dress. But then what I find is when I pop it into my little folder, her pose is sort of sideways and to me it looks like she's maybe deceased. And I'm not very happy with it the way I'm looking at it. So I'm going to make an alternative postcard for that pocket window. Because the more I look at it, the more I don't like it. So while I'm making this turquoise tag, just a simple tag using cardstock, I keep looking at her and she's not bringing me joy in the little window. It was not how I pictured, so I'm going to make an alternate. So this is a really quick cardstock tag. I've just folded a piece of cardstock in half because I want the same color on both sides. And then I've just cut it to size. I've used a template tag just to cut the little corners and to punch the center hole as easy as that. This is more just for color coordinating and something to fill that big pocket. I have a leftover piece of the turquoise from my tag, so I want to carry on the color on the inside, so I've just trimmed it down neatly and I'm popping it just behind the other tags. And now to tackle this problem child. I tried to see if adding some embellishments might help the situation, but in fact, no. So I'm just going to take another postcard. I have a few of these. This one's got a Bugs Bunny on. And I'm just going to maybe use these flower die cuts that I have. I bought these today actually from Officeworks. That's here in Australia. So I'm going to just arrange them onto the postcard. And I think that'll look much better than the lady. So the arrangement of flowers that I'm doing is more just to cover up Bugs Bunny in the background. It's not really... Um, any kind of systematic way that I'm adding them. It's just a way to make them look good and to cover as much as I can of the background picture. Some of it will be sticking out underneath the flowers. So I'm just adding some gesso just to lighten everything up. So you can't really see it obvious from underneath. And then I'm going to also just add a piece of white tissue paper just as a contrast underneath the flowers. And I'm adding this with just a thin layer of Mod Podge. And then I'm going to add my die cut flowers. I'm also just going to use Mod Podge for this part. I 
I have some additional leaves that I want to just add at the back just to balance it out a little bit more. Once the glue is dry, I'm going to just add a little bit of white splatter. I'm just using the watered down acrylic paint for this and I'm just using a small paintbrush and just splattering very lightly over the entire postcard. I believe this gives it some dimension so it's not quite so flat. And then again, I'm going to distress the edges using my distress ink in the color vintage photo. I still feel it's a little bit flat, so I want to add some kind of luster in the background. So I'm going to use my gold leaf. I'm just going to add a little bit of craft glue with my paintbrush, just in between the edges and the leaves. I'm not going to put the entire background, just sort of coming up from underneath the flowers and just applying it with my finger. If you're looking for this gold leaf, I have bought it from Kmart and it came in a pack of four. There was a silver, a light gold, a rose gold and a regular gold. And it's really very, very versatile and easy to use. I'd also love to tell you about a new group that I've started on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, do join my group. It's called Junk Journal and Mixed Media Tutorials. I'll put a link in the description box below. It is a fun place to share your work, to see other people's works, to be inspired and to inspire. So please do join this fun community. It's not really easy to see on the video at this angle, but the gold foil adds a really beautiful luster. It is super shiny and really makes the postcard look great. Now I need to see if it's going to fit into my pocket, but the sticking out leaves are a little bit overhanging. So I'm just going to see if I can trim them down just a little bit so it makes it easier to fit. But even with this trimming, it doesn't fit great. So I just end up chopping off the leaves just in line with the postcard edge. I'm adding some metallic wax in antique gold. This is a product by Little Birdie Crafts. I will have a link to the website below. There's also a discount code if you use my link. I'm just going to add a piece of white fabric to my tag as the tie. I did try a bow, but in the end I don't like the bow. And then I just trim it down to size and just leave the pieces straight. So you need to know off the closing edge because the paper is unsticking slightly. I'm just going to stitch around it with a sewing machine just to straight stitch all the way around. I do leave all my threads hanging. I love that look when they're stitching on paper. You can always trim them off if you prefer. Now you'll notice that we sort of skipped straight to this piece. I didn't click on record when I actually added the piece of fabric as my tie clothes, but I will show you going forward, how I actually attach that. So it's just a long piece of fabric that I've wrapped around twice. The fabric is actually from an old bag that's from rice and it grips really well so it leaves frayed edges. And I'm going to use a very large paper clip to close it and then just tuck the end of the fabric underneath the paper clip and then I've also added a tag in the back just for some additional interest. 
I have these beautiful gold metallic stickers and I'm just going to stick the word wonderful down. I love the metallic gold. It just brings up and complements the background of the postcard too. So let me show you a close-up of this ephemera folder and then as I open it you'll be able to see that I just pulled the fabric through the little eyelet, tied a knot and then just wrapped it around twice. A really easy closure. I really hope you enjoyed this video of altering a window envelope. We get so many in our mailbox. I think it's a nice way to jazz them up a little bit and reuse them. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you were inspired to create your own. I would love if you subscribed to my channel and hit the little bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.